I feel like it's been ages since I saw you, Bob. Your your beard's getting whiter too. <laughs> oh, thanks for that. <laughs> hey, I grew one a few months ago, and it was coming in all white too. So <laughs> just yeah. a, just a long weekend kind of thing. Is that is that is that the Bob Campbell? It that's is Bob Campbell. And that's oh. Elizabeth Watson. Why how why nice am I not to, surprised? Oh my gosh, how nice to see you. Oh. Thanks. Are you Your living in this area? I'm sorry, say again. Did you you retired, right? No, no, not oh. not yet. Not you're yet. here for the, you're here for the park service then? Um yeah, sure. Sure I sure I am. <laughs> I'm here. Uh, I, uh, I'm at the Chesapeake Bay office still, Elizabeth. Oh, great to see you. Wow. And I've been doing stuff with here. those folks uh, for a long time now, right, Mark? That's right. 20 one years, our, maybe? He's one of our favorite people, yet I still have yet to see him in the uniform. <laughs> favorite oh, Park know. Service people. I have yet to see him in the uniform. <laughs> I have a buffalo up here on my wall. I could I could show you, but uh, <laughs> that's as close as it's going to get today. And for all of you that don't know, all of us, I'm sorry. We we, we see a lot of friendly faces on here, so we're having a little pre chatter. You give me the the go ahead when to get started, guys. Maybe we should start, Elizabeth. It's. Uh... Well, it's you're right. There's three minutes after. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Watson. I'm the project manager for the consulting team working on the National Heritage Area Management Plan. And we'll go to the next slide and we have an agenda. And this is the introductions piece. And I'd like to introduce, first of all, the president of the Susquehanna National Heritage Area, um, Mark Platts. Thank you, Elizabeth, for turning up my audio so I can hear. Um, Good afternoon. I guess it's afternoon. Afternoon, uh, everyone. I'm Mark Klatz, uh, president of Susquehanna National Heritage Area. And uh, thank you for joining uh, this uh, big Zoom meeting uh, to learn more about our National Heritage Area and our current National Heritage Area Management Plan process. Um, I know from just scanning the, the names on here, I know a lot of you and some of you I don't. And uh, uh, if for those of you that are, that are back in our world, Good to see you. And those that are new, welcome. Uh, this uh, session tonight is, uh, or today, uh, is partially, it's a listening session, partially for all of you to listen to what our consultant team has developed over the last few months in developing a National Heritage Area Management Plan. And then for them and all of us from the Heritage Area to listen to you and, and get your feedback and, and things. Uh, just briefly, uh, for those of you that that uh, might not know much about us as an organization. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization uh, created originally in 2001, uh, well, organized in 2002 after designation of Lancaster New York counties as the Lancaster New York Heritage Region, one of Pennsylvania's 12 state heritage areas, uh, now 20 years ago this year. Uh, our staff came aboard, uh, Jonathan Pinkerton and myself originally in 2003. Uh, we've been operating as a nonprofit and management entity for the state heritage area ever since. Uh, our headquarters is down at the Zerman Center for Heritage uh, at Long Level in the York County side of the river below Wrightsville. And we also operate the Columbia Crossing River Trail Center in Columbia for the uh, borough of Columbia. Um, over the years, uh, 18 and a half years of actually working on the ground, we've worked across both counties on a variety of heritage projects. Um, and for the last uh, 13 years or so, we've been primarily focused on the Susquehanna River corridor flows uh, through both counties. Uh, this management plan uh, process you're gonna hear about tonight is a uh, uh, outcome of our designation of, of York and Lancaster counties as America's 55th National Heritage Area in 2019, when we became the Susquehanna National Heritage Area by an act of Congress uh, passed in March of 2019. Uh, that was the culmination of a 13-year effort to bring this national honor to our region, as well as the state designation. Uh, but it also comes with a lot of responsibility uh, 
that are included in the congressional legislation that created the National Heritage Area. And the first and foremost of those is to do a management plan uh, for uh, how we are going to manage and operate, and work with partners uh, in the Her National Heritage Area over the next 10, 15 years. Uh, so we are required by a congressional designation to complete the management plan by March of, and submit to the Secretary of the Interior by March of 2022. Um, and you'll learn more about that process as you go through the presentation. Uh, but a big part of it is reaching out to the community, reaching out to partners. There's been a lot of background work done over the last uh, eight months or so, there's been stakeholder sessions, Zoom meetings, there's been site visits. Uh, this part is now about broadening out uh, that effort to engage more of the community and hear from uh, folks uh, across both York and Lancaster County about the future of our national heritage. So I hope you'll enjoy listening and hearing everything, and then we'll, we'll really enjoy listening to you too. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jonathan Pinkerton, our Vice President and the Manager of the National Heritage Area Management Plan process for our organization. All right, thanks, Mark. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we are glad uh, you set aside some time to join us this afternoon. Thank you for being here. I uh, hope you're all doing well. Um, as Mark said, my name is Jonathan Pinkerton. Uh, one of the things I've, I get to work on here at the Heritage Area is this management plan, as Mark just described for you. Um, but as the project manager, I wanted to let you know before we get going this afternoon that if there's anything that you need, either, either during this meeting or after this meeting, something occurs to you, hey, I don't understand this, or I want more information about that, uh, please do let me know. I'll be happy to talk with you or email or in the chat, whatever, whatever uh, your preference. Um, you know, it, it, all of us come from a different perspective, different background, uh, different different set of uh, experiences and values and so forth. And uh, so some of you some of you are brand new to this. You, you might be hearing about this for the first time. On the other hand, some of you, um, Bob Campbell, other, you know, you've been you've been at this a long time. You know us well. Uh, regardless of your situation, uh, we hope you will speak up. I think that's what Mark was saying. That we're here uh, in large part to hear from you. Uh, of course, we have some information, some exciting information to share with you first. But we do absolutely want to hear from you. And as we say, uh, you know, Elizabeth and, and I and others often say, you know, good dialogue, good discussion leads to good plans. And so we need your questions, we need your thoughts, we need your input. Uh, to ensure that we're developing the very best management plan uh, that we can. Um, uh, Elizabeth already kicked off the uh, chat uh, function here in, in, in um, Zoom, so please do feel free to use it. I know you're all well accustomed to Zoom by now after doing this for almost two years, so please use the chat. We'll, we'll respond to things as we can. Um, and so with that being said, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Elizabeth Watson and Peter Benton of Heritage Strategies. Um, they're doing a, a really good job for us so far. Um, they've got many, many years of preservation and planning experience. Um, they do bring a, a lot of unique perspectives and uh, specialize and have expertise in heritage area management planning. And one of my favorite facts about uh, our consultant team is that Peter and Elizabeth specifically uh, have experience with us, uh, with our heritage area that dates back to the 1990s. When in fact they prepared the uh, state state involvement in state heritage area feasibility study way back in this our two county region is being considered as a Pennsylvania heritage area. And flash forward, uh, whatever it's been, 25 years or so, here we are again. So some things will change and some stay the same, but it's great to be in the same good hands with Elizabeth and Peter. And uh, with that, uh, I will turn it to Elizabeth for our presentation. Thank you all. Thanks, Jonathan. It's, it's great to be here and it does feel almost like being home. For Peter, he's next door in Chester County. So he is effectively home here in Pennsylvania. I'm just two hours south and a favorite location for many Lancastrians, especially also York folks to get down to the Chesapeake Bay. I'm, I'm in Chestertown, Maryland. Um, it's a real pleasure and it does feel like being home, being able to work in, in the Susquehanna National Heritage Area, dream come true really 25 years ago. Uh, what is the Susquehanna National Heritage Area? Let's look first at the place and the local coordinating entity. The legislation that we'll talk about in a sec calls for uh, a local coordinating entity. That is who we call the Susquehanna National Heritage Area Incorporated, uh, SNHA is how we'll call them. And then it's also a place. It is the Susquehanna National Heritage Area, the two counties, which is, uh, this is our map of the area. 
And as you can see, there's plenty of small towns in the area. It's a very large uh, two county area in Pennsylvania, um, much larger than any of the smaller heritage areas you might see uh, further south on Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. A national heritage area organizes programs for a lot of different things. You know, this is this program is long and I'm not gonna read everything to you. Um, is this kind of like a smorgasbord? You know, if you go to a, a buffet and you wanna fill your plate, you take small amounts of every single thing. So we're gonna take small amounts of these slides and we'll make these slides available to you later. And if I say something, or if you see something in a slide that you're really interested in, please do jot it in the chat and we'll try to get to it by the end of the show. I'm trying racing along to try to get you to um, uh, get us to a point of being able to discuss this because this is, uh, a listening session as much as a sharing session. So we're looking at a lot of different programs and I think you'll pick up through the whole process the different kinds of things the National Heritage Area does. Mark mentioned that you became the 55th National Heritage Area uh, back in 2019 and um, it was uh, signed by President Trump and there's a lot of uh, language in the legislation that is one of the guiding um, uh, frameworks for the management plan. Everything that we put in the plan has to has to do that, um, has to help move um, the actions of the heritage area toward fulfilling the intent of the legislation. As Mark also mentioned, many years of uh, heritage area, you're actually one of the, um, probably among the older heritage areas, if you don't count when you came online as a national heritage area, an organization with 20 years of experience is, um, uh, a rare organization. Many of these heritage areas come on board and are organizing as they go with a nonprofit. In our case, this organization has had a, a lot of different accomplishments over the years. Uh, especially important was forming a relationship with the Captain John Smith Chesapeake National Historic Trail um, in 2006. And as you can see, the Zerman Center, the picture on the left, is the, is the center for heritage for, the, for both the heritage area and for the Captain John Smith Trail. They've done a lot of strategic planning and, um, and developed a lot of different relationships. Since uh, 19, about 2008, the strategic plan called for them to focus on the Susquehanna. So we have some new things happening ahead of us, um, including uh, spreading the wings of this heritage area's efforts across the entire two county area. And looking forward, the Chief Uncas will be launched in the spring and you may have seen pictures of it coming through through uh, Lancaster County to, uh, to, to its um, stop in Marietta at the moment. And um, Mifflin Farm across the river in York County will become a third site managed by the Susquehanna National Heritage Area once funds are raised. And anybody who wants to help write a check, you're more than welcome. Uh, we have a project advisory committee and uh, we have several people who are on this list who are with us today. I, I did see Jackie and David Jackie Kramer, Kajo, Captain John Smith, and David Blackburn of the Landis Valley Museum joined us. Uh, others may be on, but I haven't, uh, don't have a way of seeing names at this point. But it's a very important group that's been advising us all along. We have a planning team. Uh, Mark and Jonathan, we consider to be the leaders of our planning team, and the rest of us are the consultants. Peter's with me today, as is Judy Walden and Rebecca Murphy are both on with us as well. So what are our overall aspirations? We worked with the Project Advisory Committee to create this vision. The Susquehanna National Heritage Area is regarded across the nation as a place with a unique identity where people and communities cultivate their connections with each other, the landscape and their history. So this SNHA has its mission uh, reflecting that. Uh, it connects people and communities of Lancaster and York counties to one another and to the nation through stories about the resources and the history of this nationally important place. The National Heritage Area welcomes visitors, cultivates partnerships, and nurtures a strong regional identity. You know, I know you all have lots of different choices today to fly, and <laughs> this plane is going toward heritage, and there's a lot of different activities in it, and uh, it's, it's uh, a way of organizing a lot of people's different interests. So we have a lot of goals that go with that. Uh, resources and identity, who we are. The resources and identity is to sustain and enhance um, place and identity across the entire national heritage area, fostering storytelling and helping audiences in, uh, appreciate the history and its historic sites, the natural resources and the communities in the area. It's a very, very special place. And I think um, it was long overdue that you become part of the national heritage area system. Uh, focusing on the how the Susquehanna River has shaped the natural landscape and humans' responses to that landscape, 
and encouraging greater public awareness of the national importance of the National Heritage Area's resources and identity. It's time for Lancaster and York to claim that uh, national attention that you, you deserve for the hard work over many years of protecting and enhancing this beautiful place. So what are we working toward? There's some benefits, fostering healthy natural resources and healthy human relationships with those resources, emphasizing the importance of the heritage area's resources and identity to its economic vitality and attractions, a unique place to live, work, invest, um, and visit. So I, it's it's a it's a really great place to, um, you know, reflect on long-standing cultivation of community through something a program like Crispus Attics, um, you know, the, the the rare survival really of of these long-standing farmers markets and other programs that bring people into the uh, cities and, and towns and natural landscapes of the area. Another benefit is to make it easier for those moving around the National Heritage Area to find their way and maintain a, an awareness of the region's resources and identity. So the last of our goals is how do we work together? So organization and action. We wanna build the capacity of organizations, communities, and networks to work in concert with the vision, mission, and goals of the National Heritage Area and build a strong constituency of partnerships and supporters that can act to protect and enhance the natural heritage area's resources and identity. So what is the management planning process? First, there's assessment. Who are the stakeholders? Where are the communities? Where are the historic resources? What kind of land protection has been happening? Where do you do your outdoor recreation? What is the heritage tourism? Uh, and what are the strengths and, and opportunities in there? So looking at opportunities for interpretation and education, preservation and stewardship, community enhancement, and visitor experience. Lots of different groups already working in all of these different areas. The intent of the heritage area is to bring those people together, um, working together toward a, a common vision and accomplishments. So what will the management plan contain? Well, the outline's very short. Uh, we want to do a vision. Uh, we'll have a, a, a discussion of the experience of place in our first chapter. And all you'll need to do in the, in the end is read the first chapter. The, the other chapters will expand on what you'll learn in chapter one. We wanna talk about the evolution of the natural and cultural landscape. Interpretation and education is a big emphasis in this program because the conservation piece, especially land conservation and community planning uh, is well in hand. I'll say more about that in a little bit. And then experiencing this place. How do people recreate? How do, they pe how do people find their way? Um, what is the heritage tourism like? And overall, SNHA itself is going to need to um, think through uh, how it's going to be organized, how it's going to manage um, partnerships and um, basically raise the money and um, fulfill the, the vision really of the federal legislation. Storytelling opportunities. Um, this is the big one. And in fact, really for um, Peter and I've worked for many years in this whole area of, of heritage areas and this is what's new, the interpretation. Um, everybody plans interpretation on a site-by-site -site basis. In this case, what we're looking for is, is a vast network across the entire landscape of two counties. And it's a big landscape when you start looking at the individual organizations and sites that are working on interpretation. Now, when we say interpretation, we mean historic and natural, um, and all the other things that go with that, arts, archeology, span lots of different things. So there's, we've done an inventory. And those of you who are with historic sites are very shortly gonna receive a very brief survey asking you to confirm or ask to basically contribute information about your organization so we can confirm that the inventory that we've done is, is appropriate. So th this is um, for the size of your heritage area, you have a lot to offer. It's um, I think typical to find that in Pennsylvania heritage areas of which you're not the first, um, there are quite a few others and uh, it's maybe more common to find it in the East but it is a remarkable uh, inventory that you have of these things. I mean, it takes two pages to get it all on here. Four excursion railroads, I don't know if there's any, we have to ask, but the, we have to ask the other 54 but I'm not sure there's any other national heritage area that's got four excursion railroads, all separate individually, separate organizations. Uh, lots of visitor centers, all kinds of good things going on. So what's gonna be SNHA's role? 
Um, the big one is to create a program of outreach to all sites and organizations to encourage their collaboration. Uh, a program of modest matching grants. When you finish your management plan, a heritage area gets to uh, receive um, a fairly standard amount of money, somewhere between $250,000 and $500,000. Um, we usually think of it as $300,000. It could be more, um, depending on how funds go each year. But um, adding technical assistance, it, it implies that there's going to be some real investment in interpretation, and that is going to be true. Um, also aiding interpretive sites and communities and in installing more outdoor interpretive signage. There's a little bit, some really nice stuff like the one on the right, the picture on the right, but there's uh, a great a need for a great deal more. So we have five interpretive themes and um, we've reordered since the last time, those of you who were part of the discussion last week, um, we've thought a little bit more about this. The big one is of course, the Susquehanna National Harry Jerry's name, Susquehanna River shapes us. This is a storied natural landscape and it's a watershed that has shaped the lives of modern humans and vice versa. And we wanna be sure that that story is told everywhere and well. Native lands, the Susquehanna River Corridor was a remarkable habitat for humans, has been a remarkable habitat for humans from paleo Indian times onward. Uh, still a pretty wonderful place to be. When we uh, look at the, looked at the work that had been done on themes already, we realized that uh, the American Indian story and Native American story is a really really important one here. And we've given it a full theme here. Uh, finding home, an American cultural hearth. This one has been a persistent theme throughout. Um, and uh, we're looking at how the cultural influences from this region, region from the Pennsylvania rifle to the Conestoga wagon and other kinds of things about the culture that developed in this first major area to develop away from the water. Um, if you stop to think about 17th century in this part of the world, you had did not have access except via the Susquehanna River, which, as you know, is one rocky place. Um, there was it, it forced a lot of interesting evolution of transportation and other things. So we're looking at where are the cultural influences that developed in this region, where they go across the nation. It's a fascinating story. Turning points and dividing lines. Um, this one, we're going to be developing particular storylines of so, uh, illustration to the left um, of uh, the Christiana resistance exhibit in, uh, in Christiana in Lancaster County is an example of one of the many important stories, um, a story of you have a remarkable abolition landscape uh, to the right is the Goodrich Center in, in York, um, where you had a very early um, participant in the Underground Railroad, literally running a railroad, Mr. Goodrich. Um, and, but there are other stories that go with these sort of sense of turning points and dividing lines. The Mason-Dixon line, um, the, um, the American Congress, uh, Continental Congress meeting in, in York and establishing um, the sort of original compact before our constitution. So the shaping of American culture and society over time and the choices people made and the lives that they lead all come from this area. And there's a lot of really interesting stories to tell in this theme. And lastly, tales of the two cities, York and Lancaster. But those are the sort of largest population centers. It's really a, a question of how the entire two counties evolved geographically, how they were influenced by economics, technology, styles, their population changes in that. Lots of different stories to find in these five different themes. Opportunities for preservation and conservation. This is a, a big responsibility of any heritage area is making sure that what's, what has been preserved and what has made you significant remains. Um, in terms of preservation, you have had, um, you know, the, the survival of the structures and landscapes that you have in these two counties is remarkable and it's a really major factor in your national heritage area designation. There are well-established programs and goals for state, county, cities, um, but we are concerned about the practice of historic preservation at the local level. It's uh, somewhat more limited than we might expect given, for example, 607 resources of various kinds from small objects to full historic districts are eligible in Lancaster and 514 have been judged eligible by the PHMC, Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission, but only a, a fraction of that is actually listed in the National Register and only a few have been listed since 2001. 
So we're wondering, you know, how to how to help um, uh, get more going in that area. How do we um, help uh, municipal programs expand and uh, and protect more historic sites? There is, of course, historic preservation going on all over. How can we be more supportive in that? So what is the role? Collaborating with others and advocating to build public awareness, supporting and training advocates, and intervening or supporting others where appropriate to save endangered historic properties of significance to the region. The Mifflin Farm, which I mentioned earlier in York County, just outside Wrightsville on the river, uh, which is an underground railroad site, and uh, a part of that abolition landscape, that African-American uh, heritage that you have in this region, is, uh, is it's, it's really important to, to work to protect all of those sites. Conservation, ton of conservation. I think if anything, this is the biggest change for us from 25 years ago when we were completing the feasibility study for this heritage area as a Pennsylvania program. At that point, the Pennsylvania Natural Heritage Inventory had not been completed in both counties and we were not um, the information that was being collected was not available to us. It's an astonishing natural landscape. I think it reinforces why this is a rich cultural landscape. You would not have the richness that you have in the landscape that you experience as humans if the natural landscape wasn't also quite special. So we have a lot of different things going on. The Susquehanna River is said to be the world's most old, the most ancient major river system. Um, it's, it's a fascinating geology story just in itself. You have the Pennsylvania Highlands, which connect the two counties, uh, east and west, and the shared natural area priority, a big one, uh, illustrated to the left is the Conowingo Islands. Uh, just, it's just wonderful to read the, pencil, the, the natural heritage inventory. If you are interested in this kind of thing, I can commend them to you. Um, so farmland preservation has been a big piece of this, as has been the protection of the natural landscape. And um, York especially just recently organized around um, protecting things. Lancaster Conservancy is um, uh, now working in uh, both sides of the river. And um, things like the Conowago Mountains, which are part of the um, Highlands program, just, just remarkable natural resources. The Natural Heritage Inventory, as I mentioned, has all of these different uh, species of concern. Um, eBird, you guys, <laughs> Pennsylvania has the fifth largest number of people participating in eBird, which is uh, university, is Cornell, um, uh, un Cornell University's uh, famous ornithological program. Um, the P Pennsylvania Ornithological Society's numbers are even higher count of how many birds that you might be able to see in Lancaster and in York counties. And in eBird, Pennsylvania is fifth in the nation for the number of people maintaining bird lists. It's a really important area. Six important bird areas uh, designated by National Audubon. So SNHA's role is to continue to focus on the river corridor as a conservation partner working with the Lancaster Conservancy and the municipalities and others to really work to help save any endangered properties of significant conservation value. That doesn't necessarily mean that SNHA would be uh, either an investor or a leader in that, but it is certainly going to be and maintain itself as a resource. Playing a supportive role alongside others, best place to lead in advocating for water quality, farm and natural lands, um, and why needs effort as a voice for the river and its needs for stewardship throughout the watershed in both counties. We're gonna report annually on conservation in the Lower Susquehanna through workshops and reports. Um, I'm gonna to have to take a quick break. Um, Peter, if you would like to do um, this next piece a little bit, or Judy, if I could ask you to say something, I've got a, um, a disturbance in the background I've got to take care of. Um, so we, uh are also working on the recreational aspects of the heritage area that's part of the requirements of the uh, legislation. And that includes um, some very significant um, uh, national level uh, recognition that's uh, been had, the Susquehanna River Water Trail and the Captain John Smith uh, Chesapeake uh, National uh, Historic Trail are both uh, important national designations that we um, are um, uh, blessed to be able to take advantage of, and I will pass it back to Elizabeth. Okay, thanks, Peter. Okay, let's see here, make this go. Um, so the role for, uh, um, uh, we're, let's see, did, I, did we get, 
So, okay, so we're on we're on the visitor experience. Sorry, uh, recreation, outdoor recreation. So, what is going to be SNHA's role? Uh, really focusing on Susquehanna water trail planning and support. Water access is the hardest. Um, you know, it's it's not trails are not easy in any case, but um, getting more water access uh, is is really important, and it's uh, going to take a lot of coordination and uh, additional planning. So being a voice for trail and water access and working with county and municipal agencies and their efforts to plan for all of this. And then working with the National Park Service, um, Bob Campbell, some of you heard us joshing with Bob, who's part of the um, Chesapeake Bay Gateways Network um, and, uh, and, and working to advocate for protection of the Chesapeake Bay and the Susquehanna River. There's a, a large number of organizations, uh, much larger even than uh, SNHA working on these issues. And, um, helping to channel that um, the voices of people in the two counties will be a part of what they do. So the outdoor recreation, uh, the findings are that you have a lot of trails, um, more than half of the uh, miles of bikeways in Lancaster are off-road, um, and you have many miles of land-based trails in York County. Um, you know, you guys are known really for um, the Northwest Lancaster County Rail Trail and the Heritage Rail Trail in each uh, in, in Lancaster and York, respectively, and some really wonderful programs for recreation. In fact, I've joked that I'm going to get a dog and move up to you guys. <laughs> it's a pretty nice place to to get outdoors. Um, so heritage tourism, um, SNHA's role there is to work with the traditional tourism promotion of the region. This is um, something for everybody to try to understand: is that you know you have people who who are uh, collecting funds and using those funds to develop both York and Lancaster counties as destinations. And that will continue. What we're hoping to see is, um, is even more robust promotion of the heritage tourism experience and really helping people be aware that this is a national heritage area well worth visiting. Um, so working on, on, on getting more marketing, there's tourism marketing, and then there's tourism planning and development for interpretive sites. What do interpretive sites that we have now need to do more of in order to be even more welcoming places, even more uh, places that attract even more visitors? So how do we get more audiences to the sites that we already have? It's going to take planning and development. It isn't simply just putting word out that these places are worth visiting. It's helping those places be ready for those visitors and serve them well. Wayfinding. What's really great, guys, is that the legislation itself has ensuring that insistent, con clear, consistent, and appropriate signs identifying points of public access and sites of interest are posted throughout the heritage area. That's a, that's a goal. That's a, a mandate. It's going to take more than SNHA itself. It's going to take all of you working in concert with counties, municipalities, PennDOT, other state-level leaders. Um, it should be possible to get entrance signs to the National Heritage Area on major roads. Many National Heritage Areas have done that, so we've had others who've pioneered the hard work of working with their DOTs to get this done. Um, in the absence of getting signs in the ground, um, they will certainly be uh, developing internet-enabled wayfinding to support whatever can be done to get actual physical signs. One of the things that Peter and I believe very strongly is that helping your population to be to understand the identity of this National Heritage Area, uh, well-considered context-sensitive signage system will be a good way of helping your entire population understand your importance. So priorities. So we've, we've, we've worked on this already and we have these five priorities to suggest and we would really like to hear from you now and later on these and anything else that you're um, considering that you're, the things that you're interested in that you would like to see the heritage area working in. But these are the five big ones. Providing leadership role and providing a high quality visitor experience in the Susquehanna River corridor. Um, one of the things I didn't explain earlier, but let me do that now is that SNHA has two roles. Um, they have been a premier um, destination organization. They offer the Zimmerman Center picture here and they are um, contractors with the Borough of Columbia for the Columbia Crossing Center and providing visitor services and interpretation. And of course, the Chief Uncas will replace the current boat program that's been on the, on the water for quite a while, offering boat tours 
uh, residents um, throughout the region as well as visitors have been able to get on the water, many thousands, um, as, as well as many thousands of students who come in through the Captain John Smith program and the um, teacher ranger programs that they've been able to put in place. So they want to continue that leadership role in being um, not simply a coordinator of all the others who are doing this work, but doing this work as well. Um, supporting the development of interpretive programs and sites across the region. Uh, we are now discussing the intention of putting staff in place to help with that, as well as the grants that I mentioned earlier. Preserving and celebrating the region's remarkable historic and cultural resources. And again, we believe it may be necessary to put staff in place to support uh, a renewed effort at historic preservation to match the achievement in the protection of farmland, natural resources, and generally community planning. Um, we'd like to see historic preservation beefed up in that area. Uh, coordinating, and if you are telling the stories the way we hope, we think that the public will be supportive of the efforts also to protect historic resources. So coordinating the planning, public access and interpretation associated with the Susquehanna River and its multiple designations. And finally, the digital wayfinding and outdoor interpretation at sites and communities that we mentioned. One of the things that we think is possible is in addition to the wayfinding portion of a signage plan, um, it should be possible to work with sites on outdoor interpretation at those sites outside of the, the highway right of way, which is fiercely, jealously guarded by PennDOT. Um, the, we should be able to get a great deal more um, signs in the ground. You may have noticed a picture of Dill's Tavern um, and, uh, in, in the northern part of York County and in Dillsburg, and they have some wonderful outdoor signage there. So it's, it's possible. It's just expensive and hard to do, and, and I think if we can put people in place to help, that would be good. Okay. Uh, so here we are. We're at discussion, um, and I'd, I'd like to um, suggest some questions that you all could help us answer and, and explore during the, the next few minutes of this, this gathering. We've done this in about, um, uh, we have about um, uh, about 50 minutes, if, um, if we can, to, uh, to talk and answer questions. So these are, the, these are some basic questions. If you're a part of an organization, what programming and activities is your organization undertaking? Um, which, if no matter whether you're part of an organization or if you're just curious to learn about the heritage area, what are the resources that are most critical to you? Where do you want to see SNHA and its partners put their efforts in terms of historic, natural, scenic, recreational, interpretive, and arts resources? If you're part of an organization, what challenges do you face in fulfilling your mission? And finally, how can Susquehanna National Heritage Area help you to achieve your goals? And I'd like to suggest another, and that is if you're a resident of the area and you enjoy this part of the world, um, how would you want to share that with others? What do you think um, could be done to help people enjoy it more? And if you've got a place that you don't want to be shared, that's okay, we'd like to hear that too. So let me, um, uh, I think Peter, do we just go back to the full screen? Just talk to everybody, I stopped the share, or should I keep the? Well, I, I, um, I think you might want to keep it on in case you want to go to somewhere. Okay. Uh, somewhere on to, to want to go to one of the slides, but um, Elizabeth, uh, did we miss this this the five story themes? Uh, this going over the the theme. I, I I did it really fast. Do you want to go back oh, and look at it again? Did, did I? <laughs> I, was I, think I, I think I'll tell you dozing off, Mark. You well, blink. I was responding to a chat question that I might have <laughs> <laughs> might have missed it during that. So apologies. Right. If, so what, what's, what's the chat, what, 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 is there something in chat we should be talking about? No, no, I was just responding to a question about the boat, but I was, uh -huh. uh, yeah. The, the five major stories or nationally important stories that we, you, you covered that and I just. Yes, right. Okay, thank you. So it's, it's very simple. It's the river, it's natural lands, it's um, the- Native culture. lands, native lands. I'm oh, sorry, native lands. Used to, used, we used to have natural lands and native lands in one. Um, the cultural hearth, which is the whole cultural um, influence of this region on the entire nation, um, and uh, uh, the dividing lines and turning points um, idea that this is a place where you've experienced a number of different shifts in society and culture, um, a big one, of course, being abolition, but not, not the only one. And then finally, just simply the evolution of your phenomenal cultural landscape from the big cities through the small villages and how the whole 
system works together even today. Questions? Do I have Rebecca on? Let me, if, while we're waiting for people to sort of think through, I've got Rebecca and Judy who I'd like to call on one at a time. Um, and uh, there you are, Rebecca. Um, say hello. And uh, I'm just wondering if you, you haven't seen this show. Uh, this is Judy's second time around. I guess I should be asking Judy first. But Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is there something you'd like to add at this point? Um, no, I think it's a great presentation. I think that you do you guys did a great job of talking about the importance of story. And the only thing I would add to that and the importance of sort of interpret interpretive themes, the only thing I would add to that is continuing to reach out and provide technical assistance to organizations that are existing kind of below the radar in below the heritage areas radar that are doing this really important exciting work but that just need and just need to be elevated a little bit so that people become aware of the work that they're doing and i think figuring out how to best integrate those smaller players into the overall plan and into you know doing that with some intentionality and with some purposefulness, I think is a really important, that's the, I think that's the thing that I have found the most in my work in York and Lancaster, specifically with African American communities in both of the, in both the city of York and the city of Lancaster is that they don't always know who to talk to, how to get engaged and how to make the connections that will help people learn about them as part of their learning about the heritage area more broadly. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's why we've talked about getting staff into this conversation, mm -hmm. because I think it's, it's relationships. For all that we can manage to do this on Zoom, I think it's those personal one-on-one -on -one relationships that uh, someone who's who's visiting you, who knows who you, what you're doing, if you're a small organization with focusing on you know, Lebanon Cemetery, for example, in York, um, or, uh, you know, any number of different organizations have particular um, issues that they're working in in their communities or in their neighborhoods and getting to know those people and then working with each one of those organizations on their terms is what SNHA wants to do. And so we, and, and basically helping identify um, resources to meet needs that these organizations themselves know, they know what they need. It's a matter of working together and I think lifting up all organizations um, as a part of a network is another. You know, exactly. I mean, specifically, I think, you know, our day spent at Crispus Attucks, you know, really under, really becoming aware of the history there and the work and the longevity of the work and the investment of the community in that place and really helping them do what they do on a bigger stage is really what it is. It's not so much that they, that groups and organizations need to learn how to do the work or what work to do. It's more that they need to be highlighted and elevated so that more people are aware that it's happening and its role and the role of these communities in the history of the heritage area. Yeah, yeah. And there are groups at work in Columbia and, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, African American Historical Society of South Central Pennsylvania. Um, right. And all the heritage uh, tours in Lancaster. And I mean, there's so much good stuff going on that just needs tours. a light shined on, just needs a little bit of a light shined on it, you know, to really take it to the next level. Right. And I, I think what we have seen in the conversations that you've had is that there's a hunger for understanding African American heritage in the region. And um, that these groups are working to meet that, but they could use the assistance through through an organization like SNHA. So I think exactly. what and 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 what we're discussing, I think, is available to all of the eighty nine different organizations and any others that we may have missed um, that that have uh, one thing or another that they're trying to get done. That they should be able to look to the SNHA to to do more. Let's let's ask Judy to join us as well. And Judy, say hello, and then I can see you on screen when you do that. <laughs> hey, hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here. And um, my primary interest is the visitor experience. 
And one of the things that, you know, I hope that we do collectively is to really talk about um, not only current visitors, but who are going to be the new visitors. And how is the pandemic? How is um, what's happening to us culturally going to reshape how people want to travel? And these are really, you know, big ideas, but they're full of opportunity. So if, if I would wrap up all the trends, how things are changing, what we can expect clear to the year, you know, 2050, I would say that the heritage traveler certainly still will be the student groups, history buffs, um, people who are combining history and sightseeing, but, but heritage travelers of every age are looking to be active in the outdoors and to learn something new and to really interact with the landscape and be, have it be more of an experience, a direct experience and a secondary experience. So this is a challenge to all the groups that have these incredible heritage sites, but that visitors are now expecting something different when they drive up and park and what will we do? Not just tour the site, but what is there to do? And that's really the challenge for heritage travel and for managers of all the heritage tourism sites. And one of the things that's you know, so fortunate in this situation is the Susquehanna National Heritage Area has been doing just that with getting on the land, right? And also all the experiences on the water. And so they are, I think, you know, very well um, suited to lead this to lead this effort, but um, things are changing and they're changing in a major way. The other thing that I would say will have lasting effects of what we've all just been through for the last couple of years is the whole tourism industry is reeling from people's concern about health and wellness. And here you are in a landscape where people want to be outdoors and figure how figure out how they can be outdoors get some fresh air, move their bodies, you know, whether it's a quarter mile trail to go someplace and learn about a historic site, right? Or a century bicycle ride. Yeah. Or get so some lots food. here. Or healthy food as well. And, yeah. he and healthy food. I just read yesterday, I'm gathering some statistics and uh, someone just wrote, one of the research firms, that 49% of all Americans um, consider what the culinary um, landscape is like in choosing a destination. What can you eat there, right? Yeah. And uh, I've never taken a vacation when I didn't think about that. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and she's coming to your town. Right. Right. Do, I mean, do people do people not think about food. food when they go places? Right. <laughs> I mean, and you're you know, you're definitely in terms of, you know, particularly what Lancaster has been doing in terms of their tourism organization featuring local food and and people are so interested in, in local food and have been now for almost 10 years that when they get to a destination they don't say do they have any local food the question is what is the local food right and where can we get some so the landscape is changing and and um first of all you have this wonderful landscape as a backdrop to everything um, and secondly, you have the elements that people are looking for. Thank you. I, Jonathan, I'm going to ask you to do um, to help us with the, with the chat, but let me give you guys something that's here directly to me. I'm going to have difficulty, I think, scrolling back through all of them, but I just rolled up and I saw that Corey Ellison sent me a direct message that um, there are a lot of players within the lower Susquehanna region, most with similar missions and visions. I understand the Riverlands Conservation Landscape attempted to unify some of those complementary organizations, but the pieces of that landscape still seem to be split between conservation and recreation in the way that landscape is promoted. We'd like to see them better integrate together as a coalition that taps into several of those aspects well to best elevate that region. And Jonathan, I, I'm actually gonna flip that to you because this sounds very much like to me, uh, one of the insights that you um, helped lead the con con conversation on with the project advisory committee about the determination to do more to um, provide a unified experience through uh, along the Susquehanna. Do you wanna say something about that? Um. Wow, so that was a, a lot and I didn't read it myself. I just heard what you said, Elizabeth. Um, 
Yeah, I think I th I, well, I'm, not, I'm not really sure where to begin, but there's been a lot of interest in this area for many, many years. Um, and so what we have is a situation where we've got layers of, you know, what we refer to as layers of uh, different, all, all manner of, of uh, some bureaucratic, uh, some political, um, and some community driven uh, layers of interest in this lower Susquehanna. Um, take, for example, um, you know, as you pointed out, Elizabeth, the Captain John Smith Chesapeake National Historic Trail. We've got a National Recre Re Recreation Trail designation, and as Corey Ellison knows well, we've got the Susquehanna Greenway Partnership overlay. Uh, in addition to that, we've got the Conservation Landscape Initiative. I mean, I could go on and on, but the point is, is that we've got all these interests, and what that does is requires coordination, cooperation, collaboration, and it's not an easy job. And thank God that the heritage area is here to help sort through some of that. So it's an ongoing uh, effort and uh, we're gonna give it our very best to uh, 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 try to get everybody moving in the same direction. I'm not sure if there's a particular issue uh, that Corey, you or others are raising, uh, but we're happy to hear a more uh, specific, uh, I don't know if it's a compliment or a criticism or what it is, but I'd be happy to respond if there's something specific. Yeah. And if not, I can say we've got some good, some, so we've had some good, uh, some exchanges happening in the chat. Um, one of the questions was uh, uh, with regard to the chief uncas and, uh, you know, the excitement by a lot of us uh, in, 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 in involved here on the future of the chief uncas when it, when, when, it, when it launches here in the Susquehanna later in 2022. Uh, but there was a question about the, uh, uh, the access from uh, Lake Clark here uh, at the Zimmerman Center up to Columbia Crossing. And obviously there's a series of islands and a very narrow uh, channel um, that I think at this time uh, clearly would uh, prohibit uh, the boat from getting up there simply because the uh, geologic features of the river. Uh, but nonetheless, it's something definitely worth looking at from the standpoint of uh, paddlers and uh, enhancing uh, the access and the information that's available on our water trail. Uh, then additionally, uh, switching gears, there was another comment. Uh, uh, let's see, Arville uh, said that he is here uh, with a, a if, I'm, if, if, I, if I understood this correctly, with a company that, um, that is involved with um, powwows and Native American festivals, which I found really interesting. And they are looking to, um, to acquire some property in York or Lancaster to uh, continue uh, those celebrations of Native American powwow. So that was pretty exciting to see. Um, and then uh, some other exchanges here, some that I'm just catching up with, but uh, we've got um, Officer Schmidt uh, is with us, a law enforcement officer with the um, Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. And I'm just seeing his, um, his message here. Um, I would recommend that SNHA pursue grant monies where applicable to acquire necessary buoys. Um, this initiative can also be taken up with Columbia River Park Advisory Council, and he's offered to, to help with that dialogue uh, as part of the River Park expansion and grant funding. So, so, there's, so, so clearly there's interest in, um, you know, continuing uh, the, the idea of expanding um, access and ability as it relates to, to, to our water trail, because ultimately that's will always be at the center of our heritage area, and I think is the primary, the, the, the foremost a resource, which despite the expansion to both Lancaster and York counties, uh, the countryside and beyond to tap into all these storytelling opportunities we have, uh, the river will always be there. And, and we intend to uh, keep it front and center. We appreciate uh, Officer Schmidt and all the others that are gonna help us do that. So that catches us up with the, the, the chats, uh, unless, unless I'm missing something else. So uh, Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, I understand has just uh, reopened its grant program for the development of further boating access and perhaps the the buoys are a part of the aids to navigation piece uh, is maybe a different piece than the access, but Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission is a very, very important partner um, in, in the accessibility that we've talked about for the river. Um, and I, I tend to agree with Corey that the, that the idea of promoting the entire river experience um, is, is important. To, um, and in fact, one of the first groups that we're going to try to pull together are those who are providing interpretation um, in the river corridor itself to discuss um, how we can shape the planning for interpretation, both natural and cultural, uh, along the river. And then we'll be doing that in, in other places. Um, I think I've got that coming in uh, a little later to explain a little bit more about that. Um, but uh, Jonathan, the, um, uh, 
Uh, could you just talk a little bit about the promotion of the river and how people access information now through your website? Sure. Um, we uh, at the Susquehanna National Heritage Area uh, do our best to keep a website updated. It's uh, susqnha.org. Um, all that on, on there, you can find out about our, our, our most recent projects, our latest news. Um, our past projects and programs. Uh, you can find out about, obviously, about our organization, uh, what it's made up of in terms of board of, board of directors. It's how you would uh, access um, our staff um, and generally how you would interact with and engage uh, with the heritage area from the standpoint of our virtual presence. We also have uh, clearly uh, social media sites as well, Instagram, Facebook among them. And then we also, um, if I'm not mistaken, Hope Byers on our staff is, is joining us on the Zoom call. Hope uh, and, and the team over at Columbia Crossing also do their best to keep another website uh, updated and that is Susquehanna Riverlands. And Susquehanna Riverlands is, is the Pennsylvania DCNR, excuse me, Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. That is their landscape wide initiative uh, of which I think they have seven across the Commonwealth. Uh, the, the Susquehanna Riverlands is the, is the local one. And uh, the Riverlands is sort of your interface with the visitor experiences, those places um, and, and, and opportunities along the river from a visitor experience standpoint, sort of what Judy was talking about. How can I interact? You know, where, where can I find restaurants, breweries, wineries, et cetera? You'd go to Riverlands for that. Uh, we do have a goal and uh, you know, Mark can, Mark can um, maybe elaborate or, or, or perhaps even correct me on this, but we do have a goal of merging those two. And I don't know if this is what Corey Ellison was getting at earlier in terms of this sense that there might be a little bit of a confusion or a lack of clarity around who's responsible for overall promotion. We do have the goal of merging the two, Susquehanna Riverlands and susqnha.org eventually so we could become the one-stop shop, the clearinghouse uh, for the opportunities and resources in the lower Susquehanna. And it's a big job, it's a big job. So uh, appreciate uh, uh, obviously the interest but and giving us a little bit of breathing room to kind of try to try to figure this out too. I think one of the most uh, amazing things that has happened in the 25 years since Peter and I were, were here is um, how much better known the Susquehanna River is now. I, I, you know, I, I realize that we've got a long way to go before we might reach uh, some kind of wonderful ideal that we want to describe in the management plan. So Corey and others can certainly help us do that. But I do have to say that it was really uh, fascinating to come back and discover just how well known that you see people. I'm, I'm a former whitewater kayakist. I didn't see people on the river when I was here before. I, it just you know, there's just everything so much more and so many more trails and, uh, you know, just wonderful, wonderful, um, you know, access to the river and use of the river and storytelling of the river and sites along the river. Um, it's just the most marvelous thing. So for those of you who are asking for more of that, please keep it up. Let's keep, let's, let's work on getting more. It's, it's all, it's well worth it. This is Hope from Susquehanna NHA and just to go off Jonathan's point, we do operate the Susquehanna Riverlands website with a goal of merging it into a site that better covers the experiences and storytelling that's available. Um, because right now everything is very site oriented and listed by name. And so what we know is that our visitors who are coming from their places might want to see scenic overlooks or might want to understand a particular history story and they don't know the name of the site um, that they should go to. And so without talking to one of our, our staff and stopping at our visitor center first, um, our online experience is maybe not matching the kind of visitor services you can get on site. And so being able to merge our storytelling site with our River Roots blog on, on our site with where can you go to, to be in that story um, and that information of where to go is on our Riverland site. And so um, I think that that is going to be an excellent way to allow people to discover stories and travel through the past while they're walking in the present kind of thing um, when they visit 
Um, and it's a great way to do it so that people can figure it out before they come. It can help in their decision making and planning their vacation. And so we know that that's a way that we need to be more cohesive. And luckily, the conservation landscape is supportive of kind of saying the website that we've created is great, but has a visitor experience element that needs to be enhanced. And that probably is only going to happen through a merger. So that is on our ticker for the next few years to get that get that done. Hope, thank you. I, I think it's, you know, the work that you do and others like you in the region is really important because you're so close to the visitor. You get to see the questions, um, you know, to, to hear what people are most interested in doing. You see it seasonally, you see it daily. Um, and so you have a sense of how the visitor experience is working now. And we're very interested in hearing that from anyone else who is, is working with visitors in the region and how can we um, assist in improving the visitor experience in a variety of different ways. Certainly the website is a very, very important one. It's more important, I think, every year um, because it's how people experience you, whether or not they actually come. You know, that's another piece of this is that you're, you're, you have a footprint globally um, through, through a website like yours. So it's important to, to do that well. And we'd like to see that for everyone uh, who's working to serve visitors in the region. Other questions? Peter, would you like to jump in in the, in the silence here? We don't have musical sound designs we were talking about earlier. <laughs> and, uh, and, and say a few words about what your observation has been for this session. Well, I, uh, I, do, I would like to underscore the, um, uh, the importance of the interpretive part of this and the work that uh, we, and especially you, have been doing to um, collaborate with uh, various interpretive partners throughout the region. Um, and most important is the collaboration that we're developing with the um, uh, York County History Center and the Lancaster History Center, who are going to uh, create a uh, sort of three-part or a three-partner um, initiative to engage the various uh, other um, interpretive sites throughout throughout the region, um, and that includes uh, you know the smaller sites that have uh, that are all volunteer run, and provide them with support so they can be part of a large the larger storytelling uh, picture. Uh, there's such great potential for that to work here. Um, uh, with the leadership of the three organizations collaborating, collaborating together. Um, and in the realm of historic preservation, I think that um, uh, we will probably um, emphasize the uh, role of the counties in that. That is, the heritage area really um, isn't going to be expected to take a lead in, um, in, um, in, in helping uh, historic preservation happen throughout the two counties, because that's really such a big job. And it's really the role of the two uh, county planning offices. So we'll be collaborating with them and really supporting their efforts uh, in, um, in, in all the work they do related to historic preservation, but also related to landscape. I mean, we're, we're not just talking about preserving buildings, we're talking about landscape character. And the counties really play that lead role and so the heritage area is kind of a supporting element to the counties uh, in, in their initiative to assist municipalities and other organizations in, in preserving the, the physical elements of the cultural landscape that makes the, um, that makes the heritage area and the two counties uh, so distinctive. And then finally, in the, in the realm of um, conservation, again, the heritage area plays a supporting role, as Elizabeth mentioned, to, to these other organizations that are doing such outstanding work whether it's farmland preservation with the Farmland Trust and, and other organizations with the two county programs for farmland preservation and the Lancaster Conservancy and, and similar organizations, the state level participation um, in, in the conservation of both um, farm and sort of cultural and, um, and natural landscapes. We will play a supporting role to there and there and there is the primary initiative uh, that they already have programs undergoing. And we sort of take those under our umbrella and, um, and see how the National Heritage Area can support those. So the, in some areas, the National Heritage Area will take a, a, a lead role in partnership with other organizations. In some areas, a, um, a more uh, supporting role. Thank you. That's great. Let's go to the next slide, which is 
talking about next steps, we can go back to the questions if anybody wishes, but let me just um, offer next steps as another part of the conversation here. Um, we're working on setting the direction for um, where you need to go as a region, as a national heritage area, the draft plan will be available in January. Um, and we're gonna try to gather steam um, for supporting the management plan um, before the management plan is even completely out the door um, and in the hands of the Secretary of the Interior, the Federal Secretary of the Interior is the person who signs it. And I'm happy to say it's she, Deb Holland, Secretary of the Interior, uh, will be signing it, um, we hope, um, uh, early in 2022. So we wanna hold some geographic gatherings and we're, we welcome um, conversation about this here or uh, contacting us later, but we're gonna uh, try to organize something in the first couple of weeks of, of, sept of December uh, about the Susquehanna River Corridor, organizing interpreting groups in those regions, both historic and natural and arts. Um, and then also then uh, additionally, a geographic focus in different parts of the two counties as listed here um, and letting people decide where they belong. We'll put these, uh, we'll be making these, uh, the dates and, and times available for that uh, very soon. So we would like um, for people to be planning to be with us in uh, December through March at one of these meetings. And these will be, uh, we expect them to be on Zoom if it's possible to do anything. Um, we, what we've realized is having hybrid meetings is hard. We have to choose one or the other. And what we've, what we've discovered is we get quite a lot of participation through Zoom because it's the convenience of your own, your own uh, office or living room. Um, and so we, we wanna make it as accessible as possible. Uh, we also welcome conversation directly with any of you who um, would be interested in getting in touch uh, through Jonathan and, and let's um, continue a conversation at, at some other point. So let's see, I think that's, yes. So there's, there's the uh, information for getting in touch with Jonathan. And let's go back to the questions and see if there's still further conversation from folks. Hey, Elizabeth and everyone. Hey, David. Uh, David. Um, so let's see. I'm, I'm new to, well, I guess I've been there a year, but it's been a year with COVID. So I'm, I'm, I'm new to the position as kind of the, the site director for the Landis Valley Village and Farm Museum. So um, I live in Chester County. I commute to Lancaster. So I'm new to uh, Lancaster. Um, uh, you and I have spoken. I'm sort of new to this as well. So um, as I listen to this presentation, uh, based upon what we've previously talked about and what we learn uh, or what I've learned, um, this is more of a comment as opposed to a question. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to have it seem like it's coming out of left field or even be derogatory. I'm understanding the name of the heritage area. It focuses on the river uh, that connects both, both counties. I understand uh, both through natural resources and history, how um, our pre-European uh, uh, contact, indigenous cultures and post and, and, and colonial cultures connect to the river. Where I guess, I'm struggling a little bit with is that it's a heritage area where maybe the river is central, but it includes two large land areas, um, Lancaster County and York County. And in my limited involvement, and I know there's been a lot of focus on the river to begin with, and that this plan is looking to be more expansive, but being in a museum whose story is regional and whose story is not necessarily tied directly to the river, I'm sort of feeling like there's a little bit of hierarchy uh, uh, beginning to be developed where, and maybe this is just where I'm not understanding, is that the, the river seems to be front and center. And with my institution, that's not directly related to the resources or on the river, I feel a little bit like as part of the conversation is evolving is where do I fit if I'm not along the river? Ha ha. Well, a very fast, quick answer is you are part of the river. 
because luckily for this concept, at least, the watershed line of the lower Susquehanna is actually almost exactly the York and Lancaster County lines. Um, that's an accident, I think, of somewhat of history and geography, but it's, um, so it enables us to say, wait a minute, the river, if, if you wanted to find it as a corridor and the sort of municipalities that touch the river, which is how Susquehanna Riverlands has been um, defined through the DCNR program. Um, but for us, when we say Susquehanna, we think now of the entire area. So how do we make that connection? Do, you, do, you, do we ask you to interpret you know, whatever drainage point you have over at Landis Valley Village and Farm Museum um, you know, and talk about how you, there are connections in there or is it simply just the natural resources sort of cohere around the concept of a watershed and do we talk about that? Um, I think um, I'd like Mark to, to jump in on this as well, but I think it's, um, to me, um, the natural is the cultural in, in important ways. The geology, uh, the soils, the climate, it's all one. And what was the human response to those um, through time, not simply pre-contact or just 17th or 18th century, but all the way to now, uh, you're a part of the river. And in fact, it's an even more important dialogue in some ways that um, Pennsylvania is a large contributor to the um, health of the Chesapeake Bay, the nation's largest estuary. So, and if we don't think of the river as being, as reaching into every nook and cranny of the two counties, it may be more difficult to achieve some of the water quality things that we're trying to achieve. So that's the environmentalist in me speaking, but the cultural landscape person in me says, gee, you know, the access to the river, the, the terrain that the river drains is an important feature of who you were as a culture in this region. The people who could take advantage of that water power, they were following every single trickle to get water power. Before we had coal, we had humans, animals, and water to get to, to create power and build the landscape that we have today. And so the water was an incredibly important story. So that's, that is one answer. I, I'm, I'm, I'm new to talking about it also, David, and I thank you for bringing it up because I think it's an important one. You know, and, it, it, and Mark, I think, could talk about the choice long ago and the strategic planning in 2008 to focus on the river um, that created this most excellent platform to begin to start to, 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 to now stretch our wings across the entirety of the landscape. Um, Mark, do you want to join in on the conversation? Oh, yeah, David, thank you for that observation and trying to find your place. <laughs> um, and, and we are, you know, when we first got started as a state heritage area, we worked very closely with Lannis Valley Museum on a lot of different initiatives back then. And, and we were working sort of broader across the region. We got focused on the river corridor. Now we're expanding back out again. Uh, but I think the reason the, the, the Susquehanna remained sort of at the center of the name sort of focus is, uh, for me personally, it was probably generated from a exhibit, two county exhibit we worked on with Lancaster County, Lancaster History and York County History Center back in 2006, called it How the, How the River Shaped Our Region. Um, and it really broadened the thinking, you know, the river is not just the river. the river. Things happened in Lancaster County, things happened in York County because the river was here. Uh, you know, I think a lot of what I my, you know, always understood, you know, the Landis Valley Museum interprets Pennsylvania German farm and village uh, heritage, uh, the innovations of the Conestoga wagon, the Pennsylvania rifle and all those kinds of things. Well, the reason a lot of people stopped and settled Lancaster County and developed a lot of that heritage was because of the river. You know, the river was a barrier. It was a edge of the frontier for over a hundred years in American history. Um, and so a lot of innovation, a lot of things that happened in the Lancaster side uh, we're particularly driven by the fact that people settled in Lancaster, both in terms of the, the, the uh, soils and the, and the character, the, the farming quality here. Uh, uh, but it also, uh, you know, was part of that river being the barrier. And then the other part of the, the one of the story themes that's developing in the management plan process about the cultural heart and how a lot of the innovations from here flowed from here to re other parts of the country, where again, you know, crossing that river in New York County, uh, that was the frontier. You know, you were heading into the unknown for a long time. And I always thought that as a, York, a native of York County and who lives in Lancaster, I always thought, well, the, 
the folks that were that were sort of a little more conservative wanted to uh, focus on the settlement and and uh, and uh, and maybe maybe saying this is good here we're going to stay stayed in Lancaster and the riskier sort of edgier folks went over to York and I think there's <laughs> still a little bit more of that character remains <laughs> between the two <laughs> counties but again the river played a role in that so I, um, you know I, I you, you, everything the Lance Valley does and, and the, the fantastic authentic and deep history that's presented there um, is, is integral to the character and culture of our two county region. Um, and so I, I think, it, uh, I also think that it wasn't necessarily just an accident that Lancaster and York County's boundaries uh, uh, basically reflect the watershed that flows into the river. You know, they were, I think they were actually created based on that watershed, <laughs> you know, because uh, Elizabeth's right in the water power and the use of water is so integral to everything as far as culture and industry and and uh, business development and and where people lived and where people did business um, was also tied to that watershed. But we're not primarily about water quality. That's not what a heritage area is about. We're about telling and sharing the stories and history and of the both the land, the water, the village, and the people of our region. So. Um, I don't know. That's probably not answering getting to the heart of your, your, your point, but um, the river shapes our region or how the river shapes our region, I think, remains sort of central to uh, so much of what happened here, why it happened, who, who stayed here and who, who lived here. What, one of the insights that, that I've been gaining in, 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 in discussing this with you, Mark, and, and David and, and, and others of you, is the sort of mini landscapes of the Susquehanna National Heritage Area. You know, the river shaped us. So this, this, what is this, what is this watershed landscape that we're dealing with? We've got the African American landscape or the abolition lands, landscape or sort of a combination of that and that whole underground railroad story and the huge shift in the American, um, you know, the American culture through the Civil War. Um, one of the ones that we haven't mentioned is, 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 uh, um, transportation. You know, the, these were f phenomenal farmers, these first German settle sellers and others who had to get their goods to market. And how are they going to do that when they didn't have sailing ships pulling up to the port like they do down here in the, on the Chesapeake where I live? They had to figure out how to build roads. They had, we had some of the earliest turnpikes, some of the earliest roads, and then some of the earliest railroads in the nation because of the sort of geographic terrain that had to be traversed. Um, and so the innovation that had to happen in the landscape in response to that, the landscape barriers was another uh, piece of that picture. So I think just sort of taking, sort of cutting our way through different themes that we have or topics that we have and thinking about, well, how does that, how is that expressed in the landscape is a fun way to think about, about it. And maybe we'll never answer the question fully that we'll always ask visitors and you and, and others to, keep exploring that story and helping us figure out how to answer that question. Well, I appreciate all you're saying. And I think to be fair, when I think of what I've learned about what we've done at Landis Valley based on our roots is that we are a site that is partially based on material culture, on stuff, on tangible, on tangible things. So I think part of the interpretive tradition has been on the plow, the Conestoga wagon, um, and things that are oriented to um, the collection. Where perhaps this discussion shows is the weakness in our broader interpretation of not of uh, when we talk about Pennsylvania Germans within the Lancaster York um, area is within the context of this particular cultural um, landscape. Uh, to be honest, in what I've seen, we're just, we're, we're not really directly interpreting it. We're maybe direct, uh, interpreting objects that were influenced by the barrier and influenced by X and Y and Z, but not necessarily talking about um, our, well, not necessarily so much Landis, but the, the culture we talk about and their, their context within this, uh, this particular uh, watershed. I, I guess maybe what I'm getting at is maybe more a pragmatic future planning um, perspective is that, and maybe as I'm, 
So much of the work started on uh, focusing um, access points onto the Susquehanna River, focusing on its history, focusing on its natural, um, natural history. We are all part of a larger watershed. As, as we're going to a more holistic story, in one like um, the web of life, the points of ecology, where all of us are interconnected. Um, I, 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 I'm seeing stuff with uh, historic recreational interpretive resources. I, I guess I just, I, I hear so much about the river that as a site that is not on the river, but is influenced by the watershed, um, I'm feeling like I just want to make sure that there is somewhat of a balance, I guess, mm -hmm. between the larger network of history and institutions that are influenced by the watershed, but are not on the river. Yes. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense in this list that we've created of these different geographical areas. You know, as we carved out the river first, because that's where right, we've been. Right, right, right. But we want to get beyond. And, and I bet you we hear that from every single one of these regions. And we begin to have this conversation about this. But I, I do think it's kind of like being a fish in the aquarium. You are in the landscape. Just right. like a fish is in the water, you know. And so how do we how do we make that more apparent and help people have fun and learn things and enjoy things about those connections that they're that they're are you know they're revelations to those connections that, that people don't think about that the way and they're taught history now. Yeah. What you do bring up and, and that's exactly what this plan is for is that this um, is a tool or a catalyst for us to think about within the context of our own organization and a lot of other historic organizations that are oriented to this house, the story that happened at this house, the person at this house or this farm is um, within the tools that we have and the mission each of our organizations have doing a better job of providing context is uh, is is the word to the 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 watershed and the the larger the larger stories and i know this is all still um there's listening sessions it's a pro uh, progress in or a process in motion and nothing is written in the proverbial stone as of yet um i know i'm a, a learner and a leader that talks things through so i appreciate the time um to uh chat with you all and to get your, uh, your, your, your feedback. So I, I, I want to say that um, I, I, for, I think every site in the region, all 86 of you, no matter whether you're arts or science or uh, nature or history, um, you know, you all should have this question. And I think our dream is, is that, that there be almost a sort of touch and go, that there's this awareness, that there's this context you're a part of and that you touch on that, but you go straight into the stories you really want to tell but you have this context and that's the, I, I agree. That's the word I, I search for other words and it's very hard to find them. <laughs> um, you know, what are our, what is the surrounding themes and the other things are sort of big themes, but there, and the reason for doing that is to go from one site to another as a visitor is to get a little echo from your site to the next site, to the next site and sort of help the, the sort of these invisible breadcrumbs of curiosity. Oh, I'm, I'm really interested in the Conestoga wagon. Where can I see more? Well, you can go down to the Conestoga Historical Society, right? Um, and, you know, or where else can I go to learn this? Where else can I go, learn, go to learn that? So I think the project of all these interpretive sites is not simply, um, you know, adhering to this theme idea, but creating this networked experience that when you have a visitor at, at the ready, right in front of you, you're, you're focused on what is that visitor trying to learn? Not what I'm trying to tell that visitor, but what do I want? What, what, how can I help that visitor have a really great experience? They catch fire at your place over the Pennsylvania rifle. Wow, well, where else do they go next to learn that story? You know, um, all kinds of different ways that people can, you know, explore and play in this landscape in a way that I think um, we're not yet encouraged, I think that much in the, in the world of history and I absolutely love being in the part of the world of the history, but I think that 
you know, Judy's talking about the changes ahead. How do we get people moving out in the landscape? It's to go from site to site and learn these stories. So how do we help that happen well? Elizabeth. I was just gonna throw in a, uh, David, if, if, I don't know if it'll help or not, because it might, might be getting dated now, but uh, if you go to our website, on the bottom of our website, we have the Stories of the Land film we did back in 2006. And I always thought that that film kind of captured that thing that's like, it, it, it sort of begins and ends with the river, but it's called Stories of the Land, not Stories of the River. <laughs> um, and it brings in sort of this, of course, it's based on the themes we had as the state heritage area, some of which will carry over here, but some of which will evolve. But just take a look at that when you have a chance to 15 minute film and just I'd be interested in your feedback on whether it kind of captures that idea of people and place and land, but how, how something like the Susquehanna affected all that. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, I, I, I'm reminded by it, the words of the great naturalist John Muir, this is paraphrasing, but that the more I look at things, the more I see them interconnected. So yeah. that's a lot of what we're, um, we're, we're talking about. And so, I uh, didn't want to monopolize uh, the, the conversation, but I appreciate the, the information, the feedback, and um, it's got my, my uh, brain turning. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, we have four minutes, so I'm going to ask uh, Jonathan and then, and then uh, Mark to close things out, unless Peter, my partner, do you, do you have anything you, we've, we've missed in this, little, in this last piece? Everything okay? All is good. All is good. Well, thank you very much. Okay, Jonathan, how about you close out a little bit and then leave the rest for Mark? And thank Great. you all. Great. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Judy, Rebecca, uh, for the presentation and for uh, uh, being our, our facilitators and guides for this discussion. Um, we appreciate everyone's time this afternoon. Uh, we know you're busy and have a lot of demands on your schedule, so thanks for, for being here for this. Um, you know, I, I, I scroll through the participant list and uh, I recognize many of your names and I have to say, um, you know, a lot of you are quiet and that's okay. Uh, but I do wanna offer that, um, you know, please do reach out um, if you didn't have a chance or didn't feel comfortable or whatever the reason was that you didn't speak up today, uh, we would like to hear from you. Um, again, uh, we, need to, um, we need to make sure that uh, this plan is uh, something that uh, we're all comfortable with, that uh, we can say at the end of the day that we did our very best uh, to reach out and gather all the voices. So um, again, if you didn't speak up today and you have something to say, any of you, uh, please do uh, contact me. Uh, thank you, my, my email is, is up on the slide screen right now. Um, you can also find uh, my phone number um, on our, our website and um, you can also call my cell phone number um, and if you wear a mask, you can come to our office and we can have a real conversation. But uh, yeah, please do. And uh, thank you again for your time. So I'll turn it to uh, Mark. Well, uh, thank you all. Yeah, I'll just reiterate uh, the thanks for, for taking the time to join us. Um, and, and we do really want to continue to get input, you know, even after management plans uh, done, uh, that's only the beginning um, of, of actually implementing the plan and doing the work. So. We know that sometime about a year from now, uh, when that's all completed, uh, we'll be looking to uh, continue to partner with folks, invite folks uh, to help guide us as, as we move forward. Uh, but we're excited uh, that kind of entering, entering a new phase uh, with a new blueprint uh, to guide us for the next uh, a decade or more. Um, and uh, thank you for, for taking time to give us input today, or uh, as Jonathan said, continue to feed it to us. Thank you. And at this point, we can all say goodbye and we'll look forward to hearing from you online or at another meeting. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks all. Thank you.